today we will learn three things how to use symmetry in a math olympiad problem how to manipulate angles in a polygon especially if they are in a polyhedron and how to use projection diagrams and cross sections in a problem and we will learn all of these things using a problem from american math competition 2022 this is a very exciting problem it says that there is a bowl made out of hexagons so the here is a hexagon a regular hexagon here is another hexagon here is another one And finally, here is the fourth one. So there are four regular hexagon which are creating a bowl like structure. Of course, then you add these segments to complete the top of the bowl. And the top of the bowl looks like a octagon. In fact, it is an octagon. We want to find out the area of this top bowl. The area. So one thing I must mention, the word regular. Some students make a lot of mistakes. They have a confusion about this word. What is a regular hexagon? Regular means... The angles are same, all angles are same. In the case of hexagon, they are 120 degree. Each of these angles are 120 degree. So you can calculate that using angle formula for a polygon. And all sides are equal. In this particular picture, the sides are all one centimeter. The problem says that. So both of these conditions, angles equal and sides equal, both of these conditions must be satisfied. For example, if you have a rhombus, rhombus is not a regular polygon. Its sides are all equal, but the angles are not. So square, on the other hand, is a regular polygon so you have to be careful about the term all right so our goal is to find out the area of this top octagon the top octagon how are we going to do that I'll, I'll comment briefly that the solutions which are available in the internet so far I have seen they are a little bit incomplete so, as students and teachers, we must be extremely careful when we are using solutions from internet. And we should always think about them ourselves. And I'll tell you why I think them incomplete. And you can also give me your comments in the comment section. So this video is created at chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from India, United States, United Kingdom for mathematical Olympiads, ISI, CMI entrances, and other contests. You can check the link in the description for more information. Let's start, start solving the problem. It's a very beautiful one. So the first thing that we should be realizing is about this bottom quadrilateral. So my claim is that it is a square. It is a square. And we will be using the notion of symmetry to show that it's a square. So first of all, realize that all of these sides are equal because they are sides of, a, of the hexagons. This particular side is the side of this hexagon. So this is one, 
similarly this is one similarly this is one and this is one so it's definitely a rhombus it's definitely a rhombus now let's join the diagonals of this rhombus we know the diagonals of a rhombus intersect at 90 degree this is 90 degree now if you were looking at the bowl from this direction whatever you will see if you turn by 90 degree and if you are looking at from this direction you will see the exact same thing notice very carefully what i'm saying if you are looking from this direction whatever you see by symmetry if you are looking from this direction you will see the exact same thing so if the viewer turns by 90 degree if the viewer turns by 90 degree object remains same object remains same right so instead of turning the viewer what if you turn the object by 90 degree the viewer turning by 90 degree is same as the object turning by 90 degree in the opposite direction what i'm trying to say here is that this particular object has a 90 degree rotational symmetry a 90 degree rotational symmetry which essentially means that this quadrilateral is after all not a, a rhombus not a, not any rhombus it's a square this is in fact a square because rhombus does not have 90 degree symmetry square does so now we are absolutely sure that here this angle is 90 degree this angle is 90 degree after all it's a square so what i'm going to do next is extend these lines to complete a pyramid so i've extended this line i will extend this line I'll extend this line and I'll extend this line. All of these lines will meet at the axis of symmetry. Otherwise, the object wouldn't be symmetrical. So using symmetry, we can also say about concurrency of lines. See how beautiful that is. So here we have the axis of symmetry and all the lines, all of these lines must meet at the axis of symmetry. Otherwise, the object won't be symmetrical about that line. Okay, so what we have here is a pyramid we have a pyramid with a square base. A pyramid with a square base. So now, if we extend the pyramid, sort of in infinitely in all directions, the cross section, the cross section will always be square. Shin will be square 
So let's do that. Let's extend the pyramid in the other direction. So here we go. Here we go. We extend all of these lines to complete the cross section. We are extending them to complete the cross section. Okay. To complete the cross section. Okay, so now this top cross section, this is also a cross section of the pyramid. This is also a square because we have just argued that the cross sections of this pyramid are all squares. The cross section of this pyramid are all squares. So what is the area of this top square? What is the area of this top square? Well, first of all, notice that this is 120 degree and this is 120 degree because it's a regular hexagon, which means that this must be 60 degree and this must be 60 degree. That means that this is a, an equilateral triangle. This is an equilateral triangle. So this is one means these two sides are also one. Similarly, this side is one. This side is one. This side is one. This is one. This is one. This is one. All of these are one. Which tells us that the side length of the square. We have this piece, which is one. We have this piece coming from the hexagon that is one and we have this piece that is one. So the side length of the square is three. So area of the square, area of the square is nine. In some of the solutions available in the internet, this claim that these two sides are 90 degree without giving the argument for symmetry. Just by extending these two sides, you cannot say that they are 90 degrees. You have to tell us why. You have to talk about the 90 degree rotational symmetry only then. And you have to talk about the square cross section only then you can argue that this are 90 degrees or you have to give some form of argument why these are 90 degrees. If you extend the sides of the hexagon like this, when they meet, why this angle is 90 degrees? You have to tell that. So in our solution, the one that we are presenting here, we have argued that using symmetry. And similarly, if you want to create a concrete solution, a rigorous solution, you should be giving some sort of an argument. So anyway, coming back to the solution, the square has area 9. Now you can easily see what we can do. We can delete these four triangles from the square to get the area of the octagon. So can you tell me in the comment section what is the area of each triangle? This is very easy. What is the area of the each triangle and what is the area of the entire octagon? Give it a try and let me know in the comment section if you have used symmetry in some other problems and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.